Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to this week's show. Down in Madison with our good friend, Brian Zupke from Big B's Guide Service. We're gonna be doing some multi-species fishing today. We're gonna to probably end up fishing some walleyes right away in the dark here. And then we're gonna switch and do a little bit of bluegill fishing. Hey, it's always fun fishing with the Big B. He's a great fisherman, but he's also an enjoyable guy to spend the day in the bowl with. Here's a <laughs> No, I thought I have. Did you get a little taste? Would you like some more, sir? Hey, everybody, hang on to your heinies. We got a lot going on. So we just went over one of the spots we're gonna fish. So you can obviously see there's rock on the left side of the transmitter on the locator here. So I'm sitting on this break and I'm gonna fish these transitions. I'm not gonna fish, well, you can fish in the rocks. There's gonna be fish in it, but it seems like they're cruising around the edges. There's gonna be a lot of baby bluegills and stuff. So I'm fishing these uh, transition areas where the rocks stop and go to the mud. You can see where the rocks start and stop. So I'm gonna sit, and it's right at the bottom of the ledge where it kind of plateaus out. So you see there's a little point here, so we're gonna go back in this area. The update is that we haven't caught a fish yet, and Larry's eating jelly donuts. Mm -hmm. Switching gears. Sorry folks, we're back. It's only a week and a half later, but <laughs> I finally got a fish. God, it's not a bluegill. Do we need the net? No nuts. What do you we think got. it is? I don't know, I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping it's something worthwhile. Oh, white bass, I'm thinking it's Momo. There we go here. Oh, the right kind of fish. A walleye. Oh. Uh, I do know how to catch a Larry. <laughs> <laughs> this Thank is the Jesus. first walleye we've ever caught in a day with Zuki after Shut four up. years of fishing with him. And it's an huh? eater too. Yeah, it is an eater. Nice job. Woo. Just using a small crankbait, about three feet of lead, to a half ounce Lindy no snag sinker and a barrel swivel. Pretty Let simple. It, pretty simple, let it go to the bottom, feel the bottom, reel off a half a crank, and just let it kind of go with it. Larry got that one on blue and chrome, so I might have switched colors, we'll see though. I gotta spin us around here, and we're gonna go back up that, that rock ledge there. See if we can't get another one. And we we're in 21 feet of water when Larry caught that one. So there is fish here. Don't let them fool you. We just gotta work for them. They're not like Winnebago where you can catch sheephead all the time. I don't know, why does he think that's so funny? I don't think it's funny. <laughs> Figuring by before this thing freezes, I should be able to get maybe another one. <laughs> oh. There he is, I got him. Feels like a little bit better one. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Take that. Ooh, nice. Take that all day long. And here you say to yourself, well, why are you guys using a weight to get that crankbait down? One thing he didn't tell you is that we're actually going up and down these breaks and it comes all the way up to about 12 foot and we're going down to almost 30. And with that sinker on there like that, it allows me to let more line out or pull line in to be able to adjust that crankbait where I'm always tight to bottom. And that's the key to it right there too. But definitely want to keep that bait tight to bottom. It's a perfect fish right there. The old 15, probably 16 incher. Yeah, just absolutely annihilated that bait. You got one? I got one, buddy. I, I'm not left out. I knew you could do it. Mm, I'm a big boy. Ryan, you're always up to something, I'll tell you that. Caught one on my dad's rod. That's my dad's awesome. Passed away, so. How long has your dad been passed away? Oh God, what ten years now? Yeah, you miss your dad? Oh, I miss him a lot. You know, He's I didn't have the best buddy. relationship. Oh, that's a nice one. I never had the best relationship with my dad later in life, and I'll tell you something, you guys. I certainly miss him now. You know, it's amazing. The older that you get, the more you really think about. I always think for a, a guy that. Uh, the relationship you have with your dad is a, a very special one. And your grandfather too, right? Yeah, yeah. My, I'm named after my grandfather and uh, you know what? I miss him too, I do. 
It's amazing when people are gone, you get a little bit older, you get a little bit, ooh, I just had one, a little bit of time. How much you miss here, miss your, you know, your your folks, you know? I think we're gonna spin around here okay. again. We, I, we have got one every pass now. Every pass, yep. yep. And they're all let's legal. Let's do three more passes and let's go get some bluegills. You know, I tell you, I talked about this a while back. It really is so important to keep that rod in your hand and basically you're jigging that crankbait. It doesn't matter what kind of crankbait it is. This one's not as big, but still it's another walleye. But he hit that like three times before he actually finally got it. First undersized one this morning, but almost off that same spot again too, you know. Healthy fish. You Larry, so at, like, do you keep your thumb on the spool and free spool the whole time just to make sure you're? I do. I always have that that bail open, you know. I always have it uh, where I can let that free spool that line all, all yep. the time. Again, you know, when you're working anywhere from 13 down to almost 30 feet of water, you want to be able to adjust that that line when you need it to go up or down. Feels like an all right one. I just want to make sure you're still fishing in good territory. I appreciate that, my friend. It's always nice to kind of mix things up too. Oh yeah, that's a good fish right yeah, there. Yeah, that's probably legal. Yeah. We got a yeah, probably touch in 15 and a quarter, but I well, want to make sure because yep, we want to sure. stay friends with the game wardens. And, <laughs> it's always you know, a responsible thing, yeah. especially when you're a fishing yeah, guide. Yeah, especially when you're a fishing guide, you know, and I don't get to keep fish very often, so it's kind of nice to change of pace for myself to take home some fish, you know, give to the father-in-law and the mother-in-law. Yeah. Hey, we're catching them trolling, so we're like, hey, let's see if we can get them on live bait or on artificial. That's a nice fish. I'm going to net that one, buddy. Hang on a second. I'll keep them down that, for you. That is a really nice fish. I see like three of them on the screen. Yeah, it's interesting. You put a little kaolins on there, and I, nice job. I got the old shiver spoon on. Hold that fish up. I'll hold that one up for you. You know, it's kind of fun, too. You know, I don't mind the trolling so much flatlining like that but the other part is too it's kind of fun when you uh, get a chance and you get to feel that fish actually bite and that's the cool part you know and you know you and I are both obviously fishing guides and it's always about mixing it up right you, yep. you went, went with the, the plastics I went with the shiver spoon the shiver minnow hey let's keep fishing see what yep. we can do no, this I want to get some gills before we go here yeah we'll get some gills I'm not worried about that it's a nice little fish. itty bitty jig just slow rolling it over 20 feet of water. Look how small that jig is. That's a small jig. Put that kaolin's back on there. Yes, sir. Ryan's got a little gas problem once in a while and it smells in here. What a great weapon. Cool him off a little. <laughs> it's a fat man air conditioner. I keep my bolt clean. Okay, so we beat up this spot pretty good. How many wallies we catch here? Eight? Seven, eight, eight, nine. Yep, yeah, we did good. Did good, you know. We sat here since, well, six o'clock this morning. Now it's eight o'clock, almost nine. Hey, Oof, duh. Larry caused a... Oh, that dust with the damn leaf blower made me start sneezing. Uh, but that's okay. So, yeah, so now we're on to the next spot. Hopefully, you don't lose any mums on the way. Because mums is the word, right? Yeah. <laughs> As Larry's playing on TikTok or something, you know. <laughs> mums the word, boys! To the next spot! problem with fishing in Madison there's a lot of people that like to fish here and if you don't get to your favorite spot right away you're gonna not gonna get it that's why I always have my customers start at you know first crack of light and the fish bite the best first early light hey this week's sponsor is by our good friends up in New London at Blossom and Bloom's greenhouse and you know what today we've got the mums in the boat and you know what whenever you have a time to go fishing and you're not with clients you should really take your mum fishing with you hold on what is that Big old large mouth. Ooh, nice largey. Largey bargey. Oh. Mixing it up there, Zoopy. Max is special right here. Large mouth. Oh, he'll be back here. 
Bassmaster. Bassmaster Classic. Everything loves a drop shot in a red worm, even a three and a half pound largemouth. You are, buddy. <laughs> action. I love the action. Ooh, that's a good one. A good one? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's, that's what I'm a talking good about. one right there. Like a gnat. When they're hand size, I always say that's, that's a good fish right there. You know, I just, one thing I could never understand, Brian, is that this Madison chain. There's a lot of pressure on this body water. Sure, yeah, How does this thing keep producing over and over? And which lakes have the 15 fish limit and it's, which ones don't? Uh, so Mendota is now 10. 10. This, this one's 10? This this lake is uh this lake is eight. I mean uh 25 still. So. That's too many. That's a lot. 10 I, is 10 to 15 is a it's perfect. Perfect. Number. Yes. Perfect. Ooh, I just had. Well that a little better, huh? They just do that hot circle lap thing. One thing about gills, they're such great fighters. That's a good fit. How many think you Larry? Ten? Ten. That's all I want. Ten's a perfect amount. The clean to eat. Enough for two people. And I'm, a, how and many I'm a big eater. How many you eat how many times a fish how many times a week do you eat fish? I hardly eat fish at all. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I only eat them fresh too. I just don't. I mean I've eaten so many fish in my life. I love them just not having time to go home and clean them and, and to cook them. By the time you get back in the house at night, it's 10 o'clock and it's time to go to bed, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have the worms and the mums here so they uh, you know, stay nice and cool because it's good shade in those mums. So that's a really don't... good idea. You don't have to carry ice with you. Yeah, exactly. You know, just throw them right in there, tuck them in there a little bit. You got a little mum holder, shaded and ready to rock and roll. Mom knows best. Mom knows best. This one actually was uh this one's actually a, a really nice one, Larry. It is, huh? Let's oh, see yeah, that let's, one. Let's, uh, let's oh ho, ho, that is a good one right there. Ooh, I just had one right there too. So that's that's the ones that we like to catch, you know. They're right. They're fun, you know, nine well you Larry don't like talk about size because size doesn't matter for Larry. <laughs> that is so true. So it's good to let those ones go and good breeders. Let them grow and make more babies for me to catch more of them because i like the genetics of these bluegills in this chain you got the little guy i got the big guy oh i go right down in them weeds every time hey as the fall progresses here brian where will these fish go will they go deeper once it starts cooling down the water temperature no nope, they'll stay right here they they're, will they're, they're in their fall pattern right here okay right now Interesting. You'll still catch some out deep, but you're gonna catch a lot of nicer fish up in these shallows where there's current. Okay. And will this fish, in, will you be able to catch these fish right till freeze up? Yep, yep, all the way up until November when I put the boat away. Here's another nice one here. Let's see another, that. No, another nice one here. Ooh, not quite as big as that last one, but no, still, beautiful still, fish. Still though. a really good one. You good know. eater. There's a lot of fish there. We're gonna put a clinic on them here, boys. That's a nice fish. Had to come up here by Max. Get this one out of there. My worm is looking a little beat up, but it's still working. Drop shot, simple rig. Number two split shot, eight to 10 inches of lead. I'll do a little overhand knot on the bottom because you can still break that, break that free. Six pound lead to a number six Aberdeen hook. Whole crawler or whole red worm or half? Yeah. Whole red worm. Let them gnaw on it and then you get this. <clears throat> you don't know how to tie a drop shot rig? Look up Larry's video how to do a lot drop shot rig. So another way to get these bluegills is a rock bobber. So these lay on the surface like this. You just want to use like a 64 and thousand jig head. Um, Any you, special color? Um, I love chartreuse. Okay. Chartreuse is staple for me. Um, you can use gold, whatever you want. Uh, tungsten jigs, like, you know, rat finkies, whatever you want to use. Uh, but I really like the hand poured 64th ounce lead heads, you know, those seem to work the best. Uh, you can use wax worms or red worms. So when this season gets a little later, the trees start losing their leaves. Um, I start throwing this on a nine foot, you know, fly rod, uh, custom made. So they can get it out there a mile, get away from the boat because the water's starting to get a lot clearer too. There he's got a fish. Smaller one, yep. And uh, so yeah, I'm casting oh. that out and then I'm working these 
the six to seven foot range and I'm putting it down about four feet because these fish are, you know, they're not going to be on the bottom like today. They're not, they're three feet, two feet off the bottom and six feet of water, seven feet of water. If you don't necessarily want to do drop shots and you want to do bobbers on a flat calm day like today, you can just cast this out, throw out two rods, just drift with them and you'll find a school of fish and just kind of keep beating up that same general area, throwing a rocket bobber. Can't go wrong with a bobber. Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I'll tell you what, one of the things I've learned a long time ago is I always shut my master power switches off at the end of the day in my boat. And I'll tell you why I do that, because a lot of times I've got the covers on my locators. A lot of times when you're putting them covers on there, you'll bump the switches and they'll turn on. Also, I know a guy that was going down the road not too long ago <laughs> and his talents deployed and they were dragging down the road. No doubt by shutting that power off every time when you plug your boat into it, it reinsures you that you, when you get to the landing in the morning, Everything's going to be fully charged. Nothing's drained. It's just the right thing to do. Hey, everybody, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, we're going to talk about the proper way to really to load your boat. And I think a lot of people struggle with this. The key always is to make sure that them bunks are completely submerged. Some trailers load up a little differently, but the key is on that point is to always at least submerge your bunks and get them wet. The boat will slide up there a lot better. But this one loads up really good when the bunks are totally submerged like that. See how easy that loads? That's the other part is too, is you can look at the motors still running and it's keeping enough pressure on that boat, but yet it's not washing out the landing. You're not power loading it, but you can see by having that pressure from the motor still engaged that it's holding the boat right where it needs to go. Couple cranks on it. Come on up a little bit more. Perfect right there, yep. This is an easy loader trailer here, so it loads up really good with the bunks totally submerged but some trailers obviously are built a little bit differently. So the key is if your boat doesn't load properly, it shifts left to right when the bunks are totally submerged, what you wanna do for sure is at least back the trailer all the way back down and let them bunks get wet and then pull your trailer up and adjust it to where you need it. Hey, the other part is when you're launching your boat, you know, I always launch my boat by myself. I hardly ever have anybody help me. It's just, if something gets scratched, or damage, I wanna make sure that I'm the one responsible for it. I always put one line on, my dock line on, and I do it for one reason. Some guys like to put separate lines on there. I know Lance is like that and other people are like that, but I like to have one line on there because there's times where you're launching in current or you're launching where there's a lot of wind, and I like to be able to control that boat, either if I need to pull the, the, the bow in or pull the, the transom in, I can adjust that boat to where I need it to go. So for me, having one bow line really makes a huge difference having it connected to the front and the back. Hey, a big thing is, unless the boat landing is really busy, which it isn't today, I like to make sure I drain my boat out, and I like to do it at an angle on the ramp right here. And as you can see, you know what? Look at the water coming out of it. I always lower all my engines down, lower the big one down too. Get all that water out of there, drained out of there. Also, make sure you guys pull your plug. By law, almost every state there is now, you cannot have your plug in your boat. You want it to drain out anyways. You want to make sure that if you, when you're draining it out like that, the airflow can get in there too. When I get back home, I always open up my back compartments where that can breathe in, in and out of there. You know, you think from running your live well all the time like that, the amount of water that gets in the bottom of your boat right there, just a lot of mo moisture. And what'll happen is that when your boat sits for a while, that moisture works its way all the way up into your boat. I keep mine obviously in my shop like that. And I don't want it, that moisture getting up into my tackle boxes. Hey, this week is our Marine Suds moment. And I'll tell you what, we were down in Madison today and that water is some hard water. Look at all the grime on this engine. Let me tell you, this stuff works out absolutely awesome. This is the spot and shine. This stuff really cuts that grime off that engine. You don't need a ton of it either, right? Looks like brand new again. That's what she's all about, baby. Spot and shine.
Marine Suds. Hey, what a fun day we had today with Big B, Brian Zupke on the Madison chain. You know, I've been fishing with Brian probably for five or six years now, and it's always a lot of fun. You know, he's a great fisherman, but he's very entertaining. And that's a big part of all being a fishing guide is that there's days when the fishing's really tough, that's when really a good guy shows up, a good guy, I should say, shows up. Because again, the entertaining part really is so necessary. You know, I always say this about guiding, it's really the guides that do the best are really not always the best fishermen, but they're the best people person, right? Hey, you know what? I say this a lot and I can never say it enough. We thank everybody for watching our show each and every week and participating in our social media. Without you guys, we wouldn't have anything. Hey, we like we do every week, we also wanna thank all of our military men and women for the great service they have given this country and continue to give this country, along with all of our firefighters and all of our paramedics. Hey, it is a great day to be alive. God bless folks, and we're gonna see you guys and gals again next week, and thanks for joining us. Oh, you like that? <laughs>